Gaming laptops are confusing right now. There's a ton of options to choose from, and a lot of those options are super expensive. But then to make matters worse, the marketing around all this stuff is just extra complex. Like there's all this talk about like AI and just, it's way more convoluted than it needs to be. Uh, I'm gonna break this down into a fairly simple video, I should hope. Uh, in front of me are a bunch of the laptops. I actually think I have most of the noteworthy devices that are available for 2024 right now. Uh, so we're gonna go through all of them. But before that, I wanna talk about a few things. So just the higher level details when it comes to like the GPU and the CPU options that we have, as well as how they affect a purchase decision. But let's go in. Okay, GPUs. They are single-handedly the most important factor when it comes to how good the performance of your laptop is gonna be with games. And the good news is that last year's GPUs, so like the 40 series that launched last year, are the same GPUs that are available this year. This chart here shows how the currently available GPUs roughly stack up. So the older RTX 30 series GPUs aren't actually that far away from the newer 40 series stuff in terms of just raw performance. So we do find like a cheaper or deeply discounted 30 series gaming laptop. It's still a great pickup. The AMD laptop GPUs available right now are also good, but unless you can get a really good deal on them, you just tend to get better value with laptops equipped with Nvidia GPUs right now. The other thing to keep in mind is GPU wattage. So that's basically how much power you're feeding into GPUs. So typically when it comes to a GPU, the more watts you feed it, the better it performs. And with older generations of NVIDIA GPUs, like the 20 series and 30 series, you could absolutely have like a mid-tier GPU, like an RTX 3060, that would outperform a laptop that was running an RTX 3070 if the 3060 was given enough juice. But on the 40 series GPUs, it's not like that. The 4050, 4060, and 4070 GPUs all cap out at around 100 or 105 watts. Anything more than that is a complete waste, despite what some companies will try to tell you. But the RTX 4080 and 4090, those still scale quite nicely with extra power. So if you have a system that can take advantage of that extra wattage, you'll see the best performance there. The other component we gotta talk about is the CPU. So CPU choice does dictate the size or the form factor of your system because CPUs are the, have the biggest difference in terms of like how much power they consume right now. So we have the classic Intel Core H processors like the i7, i9, those are powerful but energy hungry. And then we also have AMD's Ryzen HX CPUs. These are also really powerful but also use a lot of energy. And we also have AMD's Ryzen HS CPUs. These tend to be a little bit more energy efficient, but then new for this year are Intel's Core Ultra processors. So these have a new architecture and they are also geared towards energy efficiency. Now, any of those four chips will give you great gaming performance, but if I was trying to choose between them, the way I'd break it down is this. Don't sweat over the CPU. The graphics chip is so much more important for gaming performance, but if you want a system that has better battery life or you want a quieter system or you want a cooler running system, I would go for an AMD Ryzen HS chip or one of those new Intel Core Ultra chips. Those excel at those metrics. But if you want the best possible performance, like the best CPU performance, like if you're not just doing gaming and you wanna do uh, like video editing or just workflows that lean on CPU, then and only then would I get one of those Core i9 or Ryzen HX chips because those just run hotter. Now in terms of the generation of chip, there isn't enough of a difference in performance between generations to be choosing a laptop based on that, despite what the marketing would tell you. Uh, the other thing, AMD's Ryzen chips and the Intel Core Ultra chips do have internal GPUs. Like they're not amazing, they won't give you the highest frame rate, but in a pinch, if you wanna save battery life or whatever, you could use the internal GPUs and get decent gaming performance. All right, let's go through some devices. So first up we have Lenovo with their Legion lineup. These laptops have been consistently awesome for the past like three or four years. They used to suck horribly. Like, Seven years ago, they used to truly suck. And then something happened, they got, they got awesome. So up top, we have their Legion 9. This thing's forged carbon fiber. This thing looks super sick. Uh, the internals haven't changed much. Like it's just 14th gen chip in there. So it's not too much to talk about. Same thing with this product. This is their Legion Pro 7. Awesome device, but just a chip drop. So I'm not gonna dig in. But this device is their new one. This is the Legion 7. All new design, all new form factor, completely redesigned thermal system. And well, first of all, the color, 
it's white, it's already winning, and then you pop it open, it's even more white, so it's <laughs> winning even more. There is something really nice about the overall package on the new Legion 7 this year. I like the thermal design, I like the screen, I like the design. Also, the keyboard, like this is arguably one of the best keyboards in the industry. It is Lenovo, they do own the ThinkPad IP, so this is basically like ThinkPad keyboard on a gaming laptop, which is really nice. The one thing that was kind of interesting to me though, is that all of Lenovo's Legion lineup right now still uses the Core i7 and Core i9 chips, so like the higher wattage, higher heat chips. So obviously Lenovo trusts in their thermal systems to be able to get rid of that heat, but I'm surprised there's no like Core Ultra chipped laptop. Like maybe in the future they'll make something that's a little bit thinner. Even this thing is like fairly thin, but I don't know. I would like to see something that actually takes advantage of that lower wattage chip from Intel coming out of Legion. All right, next up is Asus. They have their Strix lineup. This has been updated to the new 14th generation chips from Intel, the higher wattage, like the Core i7, Core i9 stuff. But the rest of the product hasn't really changed much. I wanna focus your attention on these two guys, the G14 and G16. So these are, I think, the most interesting laptops that uh, Asus makes this year. What makes them special for me, first of all, is the screen. So this screen is an OLED panel and it's just so nice. It's redefined what I've kind of viewed gaming laptops to be. First of all, the one on the 14 inch is 120 hertz. The one on the 16 inch is 240 hertz. And it's just like, everything just pops on this thing. It's OLED, high contrast, really fast refresh rate, super fast response time. These things have less than a millisecond response time. And if you look at the footprint of the G14, it is actually super small. If you compare it to the G16, like it is so small yet has such awesome performance coming off of this thing. So the chip that's inside the G14 is the AMD Ryzen chip. The one that's in the chip that's inside the G16 is the Intel Core Ultra chip, but both of them are great performers. The other thing, speakers, both of them have awesome speakers. The G14 in particular has a surprisingly good set of speakers on a 14 inch device. When I measured it, this 14 inch speaker has the same kind of acoustic capabilities as the ones on the MacBooks. They're that good. It's like, I think the only one out there, the only Windows gaming laptop that can hit to the same kind of audio quality as Mac comes from this thing right here. Uh, I love the white colorway, obviously. Now the darker color on the G16, so remember this thing is running the uh, Core Ultra chip. This also looks awesome. <laughs> it's just so good. Giant trackpad. Now there's a few disadvantages or kind of things that I don't love about this particular product. The first thing is that the RAM on both of these devices are soldered on. You can't upgrade it, which is especially sucky for a gaming laptop. Secondly, the power adapter uses a proprietary connection, which I don't love seeing. Like I wish so badly that this was just some kind of high wattage USB-C that they'd been able to pull off, but seemingly they can't do it yet. Uh, the third thing that I don't love about it is the price. These are more expensive than the G14 and G16 from the previous generations. Obviously it's a much thinner and more elegant design. It's a lot more premium product, but this thing starts at like 2,100 bucks for the 14 inch model and it just goes up in price. Granted, the screen's awesome. The entire product, awesome, but super high price tag right now. Razer also launched some new devices. Now the 14 and 16 inch blade showed up in studio a little while ago, but I didn't make dedicated videos on them simply because the performance is so similar to the last generation. Very little has changed other than some chip drops, so I wasn't gonna waste your time making you watch a dedicated piece on that. But this top one, the 14 inch, uh, it doesn't have a new screen, but the GPU that's inside here is actually a slightly more powerful version than the previous generation. It's still an RTX 4070 and it's still 140 watts, like that extra wattage that Razer likes to throw onto it. Uh, so the wattage hasn't changed, but somehow they've able to make this thing higher performing. Now, when I ran some benchmarks on it, it does seem that this thing clocks a little bit faster than the previous generation. And I think it's simply because it's able to sustain a higher wattage. This is super sweaty, but it's like the 2024 version of the 14 inch blade hits about 100 watts, maybe like 105 watts sustained. The previous generation hit like 85 watts sustained. It's a noticeable difference in kind of sustained energy consumption. And I think that's why it's able to run a little bit faster. That's the 14 inch blade. Now, under, oh, look at that skin, dude. Um, okay, so this is the new 16 inch blade. 14th gen Intel chip, like the i9, but 
The screen on this thing, it's the star of the show. Look at this thing. Well, you can't even tell, but it's glossy. And it is one of those 16 inch OLED panels. Now this one in particular, I think is the best gaming panel on the market. It's better than the one that we saw on the Asus G16. But the reason why it's so good is because this particular panel has been tuned in conjunction with Samsung. It's just the fastest one out there. It's got the fastest response time and it's super fast refresh rate. It's just like literally the goat of gaming laptop screens. The only thing that I think it could improve on is just brightness. If this was a little bit brighter, I think this would be literally the best possible screen you could get on gaming laptops. I can't even imagine this technology getting any better. It's just that good. I really think that, that like it's, it's awesome. Plus, this is my favorite skin on the Razors. Uh, okay, the 18 inch. So this also has that 14th gen Intel chip. It's just a chip drop, but this is the first laptop in the world with Thunderbolt 5. So if high bandwidth external devices is important to you, this is the first device to be able to do it. Now, Thunderbolt 5 has a ton of bandwidth, so you can connect three external 4K displays all running at 144 hertz. So it's just, if that's what you're looking for, if you wanna be able to have that kind of uh, external connection right now, this is the device to do it. But overall, the Razer devices, I mean, they're pretty solid year on year, and I think of all the 14 inch devices out there, the 14 inch blade tends to be the highest performing just because they put a lot of effort into their cooling. Uh, but their stuff is super expensive. If you've ever wondered why, I think ultimately Razer can charge that money because no one else really builds systems quite like this. And I've always said that if you're the only person building a machine that's like this, technically you can charge whatever you want because no one else does it. All right, next up is Dell's XPS lineup. And these are not marketed as gaming laptops whatsoever. So I contemplated whether or not I should even include them in this video. But in the end, I decided to because these ha always have a place in my heart as like gaming capable. The very first performance machine I ever bought, like a gaming capable machine, was like the 2016 XPS 15. And I loved it. And this is way better now. Uh, in terms of just like gaming capabilities. It's got a kick-ass screen. So these now have 120 hertz refresh rate screens. They're awesome to look at. I love the lattice keyboard. Like this is a really strange looking keyboard at first, but if you play, if you wanna play games on it, it's very comfortable. The trackpad is like that invisible trackpad. So you can move the, the cursor around, but then it just kind of like disappears on the edge. And the function keys are non-existent. They're like built into the kind of invisible display at the top. It's not really a display, but it's just like a bunch of LEDs that change. So there's a lot of stuff that makes it not gaming friendly, but gaming capable. And if you're someone that's like drawn to this product because you like the way that it looks, I don't blame you, dude. <laughs> I've been there. So that's why it's in this video. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that because both of these products are geared for, I guess they're meant to be like elegant premium products, right? They're not high performance machines as like the as the main goal. These have a lower wattage GPU compared to the rest of the high performance machines. And because of that, you don't have the best possible performance. Now, I think that for a lot of kind of light to moderate gaming, this is more than capable. And it really is one of the best looking performance machines you can get in the Windows laptop space, especially with this nice white color. Uh, but if the top tier performance is what you're after, then this ain't gonna be it, just because the lower GPU wattage. Also, I must say, the fan noise on these two devices is not as quiet as I was hoping. I'm not sure why, like the GPU wattage isn't super high, it doesn't pull a ton of uh, power. Also, these now have been updated to the core ultra chips, which are less energy consumptive. Why are the fans still super loud? I don't know. They are built like tanks though. These are really sturdy and durable. Like the bottom panel has zero flex on it. It's like crazy how strong these things are. And the hinges as well are just super tanky. But again, they're not built uh, or marketed as gaming laptops, but they have uh, gaming capabilities. The XPS products are very expensive though, but if you get them at the right time every year, you can get them with some pretty aggressive discounts. So like just before the Christmas season or like Black Friday and stuff, this stuff usually goes for like 20, 30, sometimes 40% off. And that's like the only time I really feel like it's worth buying them, but you gotta get this stuff on sale. Otherwise you're just, you're overpaying for kind of a premium product. 
Dell also has their Alienware lineup, which is some actual gaming laptops. This is their X14 and their X16. These have just had a chip drop, like the new generation of those chips, so nothing super exciting, but I have to say the X16 is, it impresses me every single time I look at it. So the thing that I find most interesting about it is that they still keep the whole Alienware theme and that whole brand going with like the unique designs and the hexagon patterns while still cooling this particular product really well. The X16 is arguably like the best product that they make. I really think it's cool. Plus the glowing trackpad, like, come on, dude. <laughs> this, is, this thing just bangs. Now, the new product for this year is their M16 R2. Now this right here is the M16 R1, the one from last year. But this one is their new one. And the first thing you'll notice is they, there's like a massive change in size. You see this whole like tail? It's gone on the new M16. Now, the reason why they're able to remove a huge chunk of that laptop, it's obviously a smaller device now, is because it's got the new chip. This now runs the Core Ultra chips instead of the Core i7, i9 stuff. That was a lot hotter. So the good thing is that they've made this product a lot smaller. The bad thing is that the cooling capabilities of this device are significantly reduced. As you can imagine, just removing that amount of like, right, look at the size difference, right? It's a huge amount of laptop and thermal capability that is now gone. So yes, it's smaller. But the bad thing is that because of that reduced cooling capability, this device now has fewer configurations. The old one could go like 4050 all the way up to 4090. Now they only have 4050, 4060, 4070 configurations. And the reason why is because you just can't cool as aggressively with this system. Now, I think this product, it's still good in the sense that this is a cheaper product. It's a lower price point, which is nice. Uh, I think that for the kind of average person that just wants an Alienware device, this is probably a better fit than the M16 R1. But this is no longer a special laptop to me. This does not have the cooling capabilities of the R1. The fans are louder. The product just feels less unique. It feels less Alienware, if I'm being honest. This product just feels so kind of generic. It, it doesn't, it's not special anymore. It does have some RGBs. It's got the whole Alienware look, but it doesn't have the cooling capabilities that Alienwares should have. And I feel like, if I'm being honest, I feel like this is not the direction that they should have gone. Obviously, they, they know better than I do is like how to run that business, but I think that this is a step down from the R1 from last year. So if I was trying to decide between them, if you can get the M16 R1 at this point for like a lower price point, sure, it's bigger and heavier, thicker, but I think it's a better laptop. We also have some Acer devices that showed up. This is the Predator Helios Neo 16, and this is the Predator Helios Neo 14. The 14 is really interesting to me. Actually, to be clear, these are not retail units. This one is an engineering sample, same with the one below, so I can't do proper testing on it. But the first thing I noticed is that this device is actually a little bit thicker than what I would have expected for a product of this class. So this is, if you can see, uh, it's fairly kind of like, catch it there. It's kind of like a regular gaming laptop. It's not like a super thin one, but it does use one of those core ultra chips. So I was expecting, you know, maybe they got a crank, maybe they can crank the performance with the GPU. This does have a 125 watt GPU. This is running a 4070. And from my very limited testing, which I don't even think, okay, let's, let's not call it testing. From my very limited sampling, this is a very high performing machine for a 14 inch device but uh, I, can't, I can't give any conclusive uh, commentary on it. But it does look nice and does feel like the, this is classic Acer Predator. I like it. And a 14 inch device from them is pretty cool. Uh, the 16 inch, this is not like brand new in terms of the product category. They've had a 16 inch product for a while, but I think the design language is a little bit different this year. Uh, and it does have like that light up logo that I've always liked the, right? It's almost like a Decepticon logo. I think it's cool. Uh, no OLED screen, at least not from what I've seen, but it does seem like a really solid overall product from Acer with my limited testing on this device. Okay, last up is the HP Omen Transcend 14. And this is the first 14 inch gaming product I've seen from the Omen lineup. It's not super small, like it looks very small and compact, but when you compare it to like, let's say like a, the G14 from Asus, 
The G14 is smaller, despite having the same kind of 14 inch screen. But what makes this one really special, at least to me, is its price point. It is a lot less expensive than most other premium 14 inch gaming laptops. So this thing starts at I think like 13, 1400 bucks. Uh, I also really like the screen. This is not touch, it's just a glossy panel. There's no like matte diffusion layer. And I've always loved the look of this, like colors pop, the blacks are just a little bit blacker when you have no diffusion on it. And I'm a big fan of it. Now, the keyboard is a little bit strange. It's just like, it's got that white bezel around it. Let me just kill the backlighting so you can kind of see the, it's got that white trim around each key, but I think it types nicely and it's great for games. It's just a little bit strange looking. And it allows the colors or like the backlighting to just pop through, which I think is neat if that's what you're into, but you always kill it if you don't like that like, or that you don't like that light. Um, okay, the one thing you need to know about this product though, the disadvantage is the GPU wattage. So this is a relatively low powered RTX 4060 that's in here. I think it goes up to a 4070, but it caps out at 80 watts. That's with boost. So the performance isn't gonna be top tier, but I feel like by trimming down that GPU wattage, they don't need as beefy of a thermal system on the inside, so they can lower down the price to make it more accessible. But also, it makes the system a little bit quieter. This is just a quieter running system compared to any other 14 inch gaming laptops that I've shown. So I do feel like there's, got, there's room for something like this, right? It's a little bit cheaper. It's not as capable a system, but I just think that for a lot of people's kind of entry into the small gaming laptop space, something like this is a really good fit. Um, but yeah, this is the only HP product I have right now. There is a Victus. I've had some other stuff, but I'm like, not really worth showing, I feel, because just chip drops. Um, okay, I wanna wrap this video up with a conversation about pricing. So. Right now, all the stuff I've shown you has been like super expensive products. And I don't think, uh, the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that I don't think people should be going out and buying all these crazy expensive laptops that I've shown. Because the best pricing when it comes to gaming laptops usually comes from older devices, but primarily older devices when they're like refurbed or on like massive sales. And the thing you gotta look out for is like every one of the brands that I've shown you, well, most of them have good sales. Razer doesn't, uh, their pricing just kind of stays pretty consistent, but the three big ones that go on sale, Lenovo, massive sales pretty frequently, uh, HP, decent, Dell slash Alienware has big sales occasionally, but it's just, you gotta get the stuff on sale, otherwise you're just paying for stupid premiums just because of the timing of when you bought it. Now the benchmark to me was this product right here, the Asus Tough A15. This was available for $1,000 at Best Buy and it got you an RTX 4070 with high wattage. It had great configuration options with a good screen. It wasn't like super bright, but really color accurate. And the fact that you could get that product for $1,000, like that kind of gaming capability for just a thousand bucks, that's the gold standard. Now I recognize that that's not available every day, right? That was a sale product, very limited time. But the fact that that product could be achieved for that kind of price point like that's where you wanna aim for. As close as you can get to that kind of value, the better. Uh, so I think that once you go like beyond 15, 1600 bucks, you're no longer in that value range. It's just aim within there, go for 40, 60, 40, 70. I feel like that's like the kind of the comfort or the value zone of where this whole product line is. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.